seed saving real quick. So seed saving, the little green gel or the gel slime around the seeds is actually a natural growth inhibitor. So what I do is I ferment the, the seeds to remove that gel. You can take seeds, squirt them on a paper towel, but you get way less germination and sometimes it takes an extra couple of weeks for that seed to sprout. So I take in the select tomato that you want. I usually, if I was gonna save tomatoes from a plant, take at least three tomatoes off the plant. There's a, maybe a 5% chance that one of those tomatoes cross. If you only grab that one, there's a slight chance it's a cross. If you grab three tomatoes, almost for sure, most likely three out of three are not crossed, but for sure two of the three are what you want. I slice it in half, squeeze the juice and the seeds into a cup, then let it ache, ferment or rot. I'm making a tomato beer here. I've actually drank it, it's not that bad. You know, it's like your, it's your 10 year badge, you know? Um, <laughs> um, so I let it go two to three days, really hot, two days, anywhere from two to four days, basically. If it's on the warmer side, 85, 90, two to three days. If it's cooler, three to four days. It's going to be nasty, mold, slime. Um, your spouse is not going to think your new hobby is cool. Um, <laughs> Your pets will try to get into it. You leave it outside, animals will get into it. So, you know, it's a little challenge fermenting at the home, but it can be done. Um, I like to cover it with a paper towel so it doesn't become a fruit fly party. And I let it go two to four days, and then I rinse it. I pour it into a sieve. I blast it with water. Um, if I'm doing small batches just for um, growing the next year, I just keep it like that. If I'm doing large batches of seeds to sell, I actually uh, kind of gold pan them. I take a five-gallon bucket, blast it with water, count to five or 10, and all the, all the bad seeds and all the, uh, all the good seeds will all sink, and all the ones that are still floating around and all the scum and anything else, you can pour off the top. And after rinsing it that way one to five times, it all comes clean. Then I uh, put them on a paper plate, mark the paper plate, and then I put them in front of a fan and get them dry as quick as possible. You don't want them, you could probably let them stay moist for a day, but I wouldn't do I like to get them dry within four to six hours, even if I have to put them out in the sun, because once the slime's gone, the coating, and they stay wet too long, they'll start to potentially sprout. Tomato seeds are amazingly tough, actually. You're pretty lucky on the, the for as far as tomato plants. I take a little nozzle, the one that you can barely crack, so it's a lot of pressure, but not a lot of water, and um, psh, it'll you know clean them that way. But also, like I said, you can use your fingers. They're pretty tough. Lucky tomato seeds are pretty tough. And what's the definition of heirloom? From what I know, or what I've read, or what most people say, it's 50 years or older. That just uh, makes usually if something's an heirloom, which means it's been around and been passed down. That's the definition of an heirloom. It needs to need to be like 50 years old. So I think in general, most people say an heirloom is 50 years or older. So that's why I call my varieties heirlooms of the future. Tomatoes are m as much or more than high grade grapes as far as taking in whatever's around them. How much you had to drink, the nutrients in the soil, the sun, the heat, everything. Um, it can, I used to, when I was farmer market, I was trying to grow gourmet tomatoes from 4th of July through Halloween, and it's not possible. All of a sudden, it'd be foggy and super cold all week, and the skins get leathery, and then the next week, it's 105, and they're kind of, so there's so quite a few different aspects. That's why you kind of judge the tomato throughout the season, because the flavor can, you know, go like this or whatever, depending on, yeah, so many conditions. Was it 105 or was it 70 all week? Did you water too much? The main thing is uh, good genetics, for sure. You can't, you can't grow good stuff with bad seed. You can't grow bad stuff with good seed, but it can't go the other way. Um, and making sure healthy plant, it's probably going to prove, and, and the watering, if you're in the ground or in a, in a raised bed and you're just pouring on the water or whatever, you could have a really nice gourmet beefsteak heirloom end up like a Safeway tomato. I've seen it happen before, and you don't want that. <laughs> Another thing, too, if you're in a cool area, try to stress them a little for water. Like if right now, if all of a sudden it, you're in the Bay Area and you're not gonna see the sun or it's in the 70s and stuff and you got large tomatoes, you almost have to uh, make them hurt for water a little bit to get a good tomato. I've seen with cool conditions, you give them everything they want, they turn mushy and mealy sometimes. So. In the perfect world, you'd have a frame or a cage over your tomato plant. When you first plant it, April through June, at any time you could have a hailstorm come over the hill and ruin your 
stuff. It could drop down cold. What I like to do is uh, only cover, say, this much of it. Leave the sides open. You don't want to cook it. You know, the sun comes out, you could cook it. But with a framework, imagine you're a tomato plant. I, I consider them like a... Uh, a sun-loving person at the beach. Okay, you're out there, no shirt and shorts, sitting there in full sun, up to about 90 degrees. Then you're gonna wanna step under the tree a little bit. So um, then it's same if you, you know, if it's a pretty cold, if it's in the, gets a little cold, you got a little warmth. If it's hailing or raining, you don't really want it on your head. So with a framework, what you could do is start off with the white, cloth or even plastic you're going to add a couple degrees of frost protection something crazy comes over the hill it's not going to be beating your tomato plant then a lot of places that are hot get sustained heat after about june or whatever and the 90 plus every day you can put a 20 percent shade cloth up there another thing that's great when you get these heat waves that are just freakish and come out of nowhere like we had i've gone to the goodwill and bought sh big old king size sheets for a dollar and cut them into squares and hung them up with clotheslines all over you know your, your neighbors might not think it's the classiest thing to do but you'll have tomatoes and they won't <laughs> thank you very much for coming out um,